I always love the Hobbit movie's design, especially Thorin Oakenshield's Oakenshield, which is a punching shield, which is my favorite kind of shield. And that's why we're gonna craft a replica using only the authentic materials. Servus! And hello there, my name's Andrew, I'm from the Shieldery. Let's start with the carving. As you can see, we've got this huge crack here, so that's gonna be our back end. The most difficult part will be to hollow it out. Let's see whether splitting works. As you can see on the source picture, the back was quite flat. So let's just carve that away now. We got quite far though, but the edge grinder now feels very, very hot. I can't really touch it on the top, which is a sign that we maybe should give it a break of like 10 or 15 minutes. In that time, we can take care of the metal parts on the back though. Originally, I wanted to use some flat steel, but the broadest one I have has only four centimeters, and I think that's a bit too less. So let's switch to plan B, which is a square tube. We're gonna slice it first to the length we want, then in the middle. The best tool by far for that is the I should have thought this through better. Let's make it by hand. <laughs> Fuck! I just finished the outside, like added some detail and stuff like that. And then uh, this happened. You see that? Uh, I grind it through. Well, I've got some tricks with which I can fix that, but they are definitely not like medieval fantasy-ish. So I guess I'm gonna have to say goodbye to that. Ah, uh, well, otherwise I'm quite satisfied. I already prepared a larger sprint that we had lying around from the oak wood and yeah well that fits okay. Also from the outside it doesn't look that off and we also got plenty of sawdust to fill in the remains then. We'll need a lot of super glue. <laughs> Let's start with some standard PVA glue. I definitely have to take a shower now. I'm turning into an Urukai. Yeah, well, maybe finish the back spikes before that. You should take care not to cause a fire in that case because we also got a lot of sawdust lying around. So better keep a bucket of water closed. I let it sit overnight, but as you can see, it hasn't fully cured yet, which means we'll continue with the spikes on the back first. I just finished the last steps of polishing with the edge grinder. As you can see, some of the holes got way bigger because of that. I should have known that. Well, it's kind of logical. <laughs> But now it's also way easier to correct because like the surface is way more even and because of that it's not that difficult to get the splinters to fit. But before we can fix that we should take care of the handle because it's giving me kind of a headache. Because as you can see I would just slip up all the time if it's not very thick at the end. A lot of carving will have to happen there. <laughs> in addition it's quite difficult to say on how I want to keep it in place. At first I thought like yeah well okay let's take a steel bar but steel on wood is always quite bad because it just grips through it instantly even if it's oak that's why i'm gonna go with wooden dowels and try to cover it up as good as possible let's finish the grip then that also sounds like a job for the edge grinder again <laughs> Thank you. 
Now we can finally start with the filling. It only consists out of the finest sawdust we made before and some super glue. First we gotta work in the sawdust as tight as possible. Let's add the super glue now. I probably shouldn't breathe that in. As we all know, super glue usually dries in seconds, but because it's quite thick and it also heated up quite a lot, we should probably give it some minutes to settle down. In that time, we can continue with the metal parts. The oval sander doesn't work that good. Let's try a box cutter knife. By the way, I already ordered a carving knife. Don't get triggered again. <laughs> I'm afraid I need the edge grinder again. No. I'm sure that'll be the most toxic dust I've produced so far. It burns in my eyes even through the glasses. Dang. That looks way worse than what I hoped for. My last hope now is the artificial aging we'll do later, um, but let's apply the fittings first. <laughs> At least that feels very good. <laughs> I like the feeling. It just didn't want to bend properly and stay in in the land I want. It wiggled all the time. So let's sacrifice one of the handsmithed washers for that. No, it cracked everywhere. I didn't see it from the back. Why? Ah, no, come on. That will have to be a lot of aging, I tell you. I just wanted to even that out and of course I broke through again. At that point the most reasonable thing would be to just dump that into the trash. Um, I mean to carve something that covers all of that area up. Luckily we got enough wood left. Let's start carving and make a piece that fits. I try to stay as positive as I can and see that as a chance to add a branch that has been cut off. As you can see on the original in the movies we don't have that yet so this is the chance. <laughs> Taking the part aside here I'm quite satisfied now. <laughs> And that's where we are a few hours after polishing. Let's glue that together and let it sit overnight. The problem here is that we don't actually know like how much space is left between the inside of the branch part, which I'm gonna call it now, and the surface of the main part. So we just add a bit of sawdust and PVA glue to make sure we've got a larger connecting area. Now it's time to fill in the gaps we left and make the transition more seamless. For that I decided to go with professional wood putting or wood filling. Because the super glue sawdust method is not that good for larger areas. Yeah well, I want to try something different because I think it's also way easier to work with. I have never tried that before though. Ooh, the color match is pretty good. Awesome. Okay. It's water-based, I think. Let's see whether it's easier to work with when I wet my finger. Oh yeah, that makes a huge difference. See that you just have to wet your fingers. Then you can smear it much more evenly. That looks so much better. 
I want to make the transition a bit more flat here. Then it's not that evenly and maybe it will look better. Although I let it sit overnight, it's still a bit mushy here. But I guess because it's water-based, the heat gun can solve that problem. Fitting wise, I forgot to add a strap for the lower arm, for which I'm gonna use this old belt now and some smaller handsmith nails. They probably wouldn't stay in in a fight for that long, but I'm not gonna risk putting another full rivet in that thing now. <laughs> the wood's quite thin there. I think I'm gonna place the strap further down. That means I'm gonna have to attach it like that. I'll mainly use acrylics for the paint job and the key here is to stay as irregular as possible because when it's very irregular the human brain can't really determine where which layer starts. Let's see whether we can add some texture with the steel brush. That's definitely a nice effect. Doesn't go that deep but well. You can already see how those irregularities help to blend it together. But we also need some massive weapon impact. For that I'm gonna use this old axe head I've got lying around. Now let's see. Oh, beautiful. I just have to be careful. I'm afraid I'm going to destroy it again. I think that's enough for now. I'm quite satisfied now. Let's start with the aging, which basically only is a gray bluish wash. See you in the reveal.